Welcome to Wonder 5. Mount Everest holds the impressive title of the tallest mountain in the world, but many people don't know about its other, more gruesome title, the world's largest open-air graveyard. From the beginning of 19th century to till this date, over 250 body remains on Everest, giving it claim to the title of the world's largest open-air graveyard. While most Mount Everest deaths occur due to avalanches, falls and exposure to harsh climate, the area known as the death zone holds a terribly high body count and comes with its own unique set of problems. Five. Litnicker was a Slovenian climber who died on Mount Everest while descending in last 2005. According to witnesses, Litnicker was last seen having problems with his oxygen equipments and probably died because of exposure and exhaustion. He was last seen alive a few meters from the summit when he tried to solve problems with his oxygen system. His body was found by Chinese supporters and his body still sits there on the height of 8,800 meters on Mount Everest. Four. The Everest disaster of 1996 saw the deaths of eight climbers, which included five climbers from the Adventure Consultants and Mountain Madness Expeditions on the southeast route. Sebang was the part of the 1996 Mount Everest disaster, where a lot of climbers died because of being trapped during freak blizzard. He was one of the three Indians who died on the Mount Everest disaster. While descending from the summit, he was trapped in a blizzard and died due to exposure. He is believed to be the unidentified climber called Green Boots, whose body was visible from the main climbing route. The body was used as landmark for other climbers in past. It was reported that in 2014, Green Boots has been removed from Mount Everest, but in 2017, another expedition claimed to have covered the remains with stones. Three. George Halbert Lee Mallory was an English mountaineer who took part in the first three British expedition to Mount Everest in the early 1920s. During the 1924 British Mount Everest expedition, Mallory and his climbing partner Andrew Sandy Irene disappeared on the northeast reeds during the attempt to make the first ascent of the world's highest mountain. The pair was last seen when they were about 800 vertical feet from the summit. Mallory's ultimate fate was unknown for 75 years, until his body was discovered on May 1, 1999 by an expedition that had set out to search for the climber's remains. Whether Mallory and Irene reached the summit before they die remains a subject of speculation and continuing research. Two. Frances Arsensev became the first woman from the United States to reach the summit of Mount Everest without the aid of bottle oxygen on May 22, 1998. She then died during the descent. She was married to Sergei Arsensev in 1992. On the morning of May 24, Britain Ian Woodland, South African Cathy O'Dwart and several more Uzbeks encountered Frances while on her way to the summit. She was found where she had been left the evening before. Sarzi Arsensev's axe and rope were identified nearby, but he was nowhere to be found. Both Woodland and Odwout called off their own summit attempts and tried to help Francis for more than an hour. But because of her poor condition, the previous location and freezing weather, they were forced to abandon her and descend the camp. She died as they found her lying on her side, still clipped to the guide rope. She was aged 40 with one son. Her corpse had the nickname Sleeping Beauty. The mysterious disappearance of her husband was solved the following year when Jake Norton, a member of the 1999 Mallory and Irene expedition, discovered Sarge's body, lower on the mountain face, apparently dead from a fall while attempting to rescue his wife. One. Robert Edwin Hall was a New Zealand mountaineer. He was the head guide of a 1996 Mount Everest expedition in which he died, along with a fellow guide and two clients. The expedition has been dramatized in the 2015 film Everest, 
At the time of his death, Hall had just completed his fifth summit of Everest, more at that time than any other known Sherpa mountaineers. On May 11 at 4.43 am, close to 12 hours after the blizzard had started, Hall radioed down and said that he was on the south summit. Hall was not breathing bottled oxygen because his regulator was too choked with ice. By 9 am, Hall had fixed his oxygen max but indicated that his frostbitten hands and feet were making it difficult to traverse the fixed ropes. Later in the afternoon, he radioed to base camp, asking them to call his wife Jane Arnold on the satellite phone. During this last communication, he reassured her that he was reasonably comfortable and told her, Sleep well, my sweetheart. Please don't worry too much. Shortly thereafter, he died, and his body was found on 23rd May by mountaineers from the IMAX expedition. His body still remains just below the south summit. We come up with new amazing videos every week, so subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon, so you will be notified when we upload a new video. Till then, see you.